My inspiration was the song Your Best American Girl by the Japanese singer Mitsuki. It's acrylic and oil on canvas. She is a Japanese artist and the music that she makes I really resonate with. Her song specifically is about feeling like a foreigner in a country that you're born in just because of where she's from. And I really resonated with that being Korean, Filipino in Australia. Throughout my artwork, I've done it um, the way I want it because I've been in Australia for two years and haven't been back home. It's like something that I need to do so I don't have to miss my hometown. The painting of a man that's a head of my tribes, it's a really important man. It's like a leadership for me. He's like a role model to, uh, to be respected. Art is something that I do and I enjoy it most of the time like when I get stressed from other subjects. My artwork is titled Two Sides of the Same Coin. It's acrylic and oil paint on board with a gessoed background. When I was thinking about inspiration to, for my artwork, I was thinking about themes of like injustice and rebellion, particularly veered towards Aboriginal rights. But as I started thinking, I kind of realised that my family in itself is a rebellion. My family veers against everything that colonial Australian history tried to destroy. And so as I looked at my mum and dad and I saw them working so hard during lockdown, I realised that I really wanted to give them a gift, give them something that really visualises and really like cements what our family really looks like. And, and that's what I tried to do with my Resolved Works this year. Uh, my inspiration was J.R. Ali, who is a street photographer and he shows his um, passion through his visuals as well but uses more words and um, really like emphasizes what he loves. My artwork, my passion is a video piece demonstrating my passion through my visuals as I um, record it in various locations and use one word sentences. Composition. My favorite part of my film was the part when I was recording Bali as I mixed a lot of color grading and um, it really made the visuals look perfect. I love the process of film as I was able to express how I feel. I love the editing and the cinematography as you blend it together and it looks like a, a whole new piece. My artwork was a charcoal drawn cockatoo, black cockatoo, and I did red, yellow and orange alcohol inks over the top of it. Just wanted to put awareness out there for the bushfires that happened in 2019, using the wildlife that got affected by it, still relating it to Northern Territory. My second artwork was a tree of life used with resin beads that I included family photos in. The inspiration behind that was obviously Tree of Life. Family is a big thing for me. Just the connection I have with all my family members and how close we all are, siblings and all nieces, nephews. So I included sized down family photos and even some friend photos in there and put them in a mold and made some resin beads and then filled up the tree and made a Tree of Life out of that. I did a portrait of my friend Gabby and it was in a sort of renaissance theme. Well I did a piece in 2020 of Chadwick Boseman and it really inspired me to keep going with my oil paints. I thought it would be more challenging to try oils. We kind of started off with doing it on a 1.4 metre canvas which was really difficult at first. We started off with the shadows first and the outline of it and then the piece kind of all formed together after that. The book I created called Twenty is about two boys that have a really strong friendship. One of them's completely able-bodied and the other one has cerebral palsy, but even though they've got different abilities, they're still really close friends and I wanted to show that. I've got similar photos for both of the boys and then they reflect each other as you turn the pages. So this way it just reflects that they're the same person, the same age, but even though they've different bodies, they're still really similar. Greenies has a really strong importance of being sustainable and environmentally friendly and they don't have any reusable shopping bags. So I designed the Greenies shopping bag around sustainability, which is really important to Greenies. So I focused on using natural resources. I tried to use as little as I could of like 
plastics and all that sort of stuff, like digital printing and that. So my artwork was about comic books and comic panels and what inspired it was, you know, pop culture and all the comic books in that, as well as a few friends who have also made comics and comic books. The piece that I made was specifically inspired uh, by a friend's artwork where they used layers. I used that to try and pull a comic into a three-dimensional format. Comic books have been something I've always been interested in. I've just never really had an opportunity to do something with it until very recently. I was inspired by two things. The first was an artist named Delightful. Her name is Catherine and she's a custom doll maker on YouTube who makes one-of-a-kind art dolls out of Monster High dolls. She would create many different concepts and designs for the one character. I'm also very interested in the horror genre, so I turned to myths and folklore for something that would bring a real element to my piece. Custom doll making brought life to these mythical creatures that many of my classmates hadn't seen before. So the store is basically a project that arose from the Max Bill Ulm store, like it's inspired by it, and then the the Orm school philosophies of functionism, minimalism, and like essentialism. I wanted to create a stool based off that. And so I went to the tip shop and I got an old wooden uh, kid's toy box and I made a stool out of that. So it really was just like a handcrafted um, all by myself with hand cranking tool. It was really hard, but it was good. At the same tip, I ended up finding a bread box and I thought to myself, oh, I could turn this into something. And that's exactly what I did. I made a tiny house out of a bread box and I pretty much tried to, as much as I could, find stuff around the house or like recycled items or waste to make the furniture pieces and everything that's in there. All, all the tiny little components is made out of like plastic bags, uh, purchase bags. Uh, Macca's cups, um, Bunnings paint samples, that's what the floor is made out, out of. Yeah, and a lot of other stuff, random items around the house. My artwork is called Ocean and it's a digital print of a girl standing in the ocean with a ominous figure in the background. <laughs> I started off with a, a rough sketch on Procreate and then sort of built my way up from there using layers and adjustment layers too. Also along with the uh, change of layer settings too and gradients. I use a lot of gradients in, in my artwork. When I add my adjustment layers and gradients it, it gives my artwork a bit of uh, depth to it. I remember being in like a, a calm, a very calm mindset at that point. So my artwork was uh, inspired by my feelings of just being in a competition um, with martial arts because I used to do that. I really liked the, the memory of me facing my opponent and that's how I've decided the idea of putting my two figures facing each other. Uh, the inspiration came from this artist that I was just going through Google and I was trying to get like a poster kind of so I want it to look more of a poster instead of realistic. And he had that kind of like that block painting um, that I really liked the way he used it. So it didn't look realistic, but it looked good. Um, my artwork was titled Tears Never Fall and I was inspired by a lot of the surrealist art that I kind of came across during my folio and just the concept of like galaxy and tears and things like that, like unconventional things with something very conventional. So I made it kind of go with that. I used Prismacolor pencils because I liked the detail of pencils, but also I wanted to make a big, I guess, piece of art that was done with really delicate kind of mediums and materials. Definitely a satisfying subject. It's really enjoyable because I had really supportive teachers that continuously helped me when I needed it. Doing art this year improved my ability in all my other subjects because I learned how to research, how to write, how to articulate, and that was really important for me. I found myself challenging myself in places that I usually wouldn't. I had an art teacher that was really helpful. She nagged me all the time about completing. Uh, I loved my experience there. It was 
really good. Like I like every second of it. I even spent most of my um, lunch and recess in there as well. But it did come with its challenges. All the word counts and just getting everything done on time. The stress was just a byproduct of that. It is very hectic and, and whatnot. Unlike a lot of the other subjects, at the end of the year, you could put everything out and show exactly what you did. Your teacher's there to help, so you've just got to be loud and talk to them because they'll actually help you with anything, which is really good. Definitely trust the process. Plan ahead, know what you want to do, and just do it. Definitely do it because you just have so much opportunities and like all the teachers are so supportive. Stay on top of your time. Manage your time. Time management I think is really good. I would recommend breaking them down into increments like little assignments like you would have for other subjects and then follow a timeline in that way rather than trying to do big blocks of 40 page folios. If you find yourself being intrigued by something complex that if you, you've seen before like complex pottery making or sculpting, or in my case, creating one of a kind art dolls, then give it a crack. Have a strong mindset. Don't worry about being a perfectionist because it all works out in the end. Once you get to the end of it, you'd feel really proud of yourself. You feel really proud of what you've done. And if you need to fix up the mistakes, do it. Or if not, make it into art. Because, you know, there are no mistakes in art.